Planet Dolan. Whose obituary expressed regret about not being hit by a truck? Why did a woman's obituary list her bra size? These are 15 of the strangest obituaries ever written. My name is Nixium, and today, I'll be your narrator. Number 15. Dolores Aguilar. Usually, an obituary is a place where you would say some nice things about people, but according to Dolores Aguilar's obituary, she, quote, had no hobbies, made no contribution to society, and rarely shared a kind word or deed in her life. It goes on to say that she will not be missed and there will be no memorial services. Wow. Number 14. Louis Casimir was a university English professor and it kind of showed. When he died, he had his own self-written obituary ready to go. The whole thing seems meant to infuriate anybody who reads it, sarcastically talking about how he never suffered any real hardship in his entire life. He goes on to say that most of his friends grew up to be, quote, petty criminals, prostitutes, and or Republicans, and that he was a daredevil whose last words were, watch this. Number 13, Chris Connors. This Irishman knew exactly how he wanted to be remembered, Despite suffering from ALS and stage 4 leukemia, his obituary states that he died after trying to box his bikini-clad hospice nurse. It lists his date of death as the date when he, quote, told his last inappropriate joke. And then it says that it can't be printed. It also tells people to hurry up and pay their open bar tabs instead of sending flowers. Number 12. The first thing this thing says is that William Ziegler, quote, escaped this mortal realm, unquote, to avoid having to make a decision in the 2016 presidential election. The last thing it says is that, unlike previous times, this is not a ploy to avoid creditors or old girlfriends. And somewhere in the middle, it says that if he owed you a beer, he would let you buy him another one in heaven. Number 11. Howard Wayne Neal. The self-proclaimed best concrete contractor in all of Texas apparently wishes he hadn't treated his body like a tavern. That's what his obituary says, along with his penchant for Indian leg wrestling because he was an ornery old bastard. Number 10. Mary Stocks. In the beginning of this obituary, it reads like a Craigslist ad since Mary Stocks apparently left her kids a hell of a lot of stuff. It goes on to poke fun at her cooking skills and her love for four-letter words. It offers a recipe, sort of, by saying, If anybody would like a copy of her homemade gravy, we would suggest that you don't. Number 9. Emily Phillips. It is a bit jarring to read an obituary in first person, but the first line of this says, It pains me to admit it, but apparently I have passed away. It then goes on to tell her literal life story for a bit, stuff about her holding the Guinness World Record in Heine getting and the like, and it closes with saying, Today I am happy and I am dancing. Probably naked. Number 8. Selma Coach was famous for getting women into the right bra size. Her obituary claims that all she needed was a discerning glance and never with a tape measurer. When she died, she was apparently 95 years old and a 34B. Number 7. Michael Flathead Blancard's obituary is clever and partially plagiarized. First off, he wants you to know that he died as a result of being stubborn and refusing to follow the doctor's orders. Also, the memorial service will apparently contain adult material, so no children are going to be allowed to attend. But then there's this. Many of his childhood friends went on to become criminals, prostitutes, and or Democrats. Alright, listen buddy. Louis Casimir used that line like four years earlier than you. You can't do that, man. He would have given you an F. Number six, Harry Weathersby Stamps. This one is a very long list of things he liked and that he hated, from loving camping in the History Channel to hating Martha Stewart and Law and & Order. But one thing he especially hated was daylight savings time. His obituary urges people to write their congressmen for the repeal of daylight savings time, which he referred to as the, quote, devil's time. 
Apparently he died on the day he would have had to spring forward his clock in 2013, which his family referred to as his final protest. Number 5. Jim Adams wanted to go out in a very particular way, uh, by being run over by a beer truck on the way to the liquor store to buy booze for a date. Now, he didn't get that wish, so instead, he encouraged everybody to go out and buy a drink at their local bar and tell the stories that he no longer could. Number 4. Aaron Permort knew that he was dying of brain cancer and that he wouldn't get to see his infant son grow up. So he did the best possible thing he could do. He wrote himself an obituary about how he was secretly Spider-Man and was previously married to Gwen Stefani. When that kid grows up and he asks, what kind of person was my father? He'll always have that to refer back to. Pretty cool. Number three. Val Patterson also wrote his own obituary, but he had a very good reason. He basically turned his obituary into a tell-all confession. He admitted to stealing a safe more than 40 years earlier, and that his PhD was a total sham. Apparently, he went in to pay off his student loans from three years of college, and two weeks later they mailed him a PhD certificate. Uh, Apparently, he also somehow ruined the old faithful geyser at some point. Number two. Morning Glory Zell Ravenheart was a uh, spiritual person and also the woman credited with coining the term polyamory. The woman was absolutely committed to living her life as a witch, even opening a school of wizardry in California. Among her credits are raising unicorns, becoming a priestess in the Church of All Worlds, and driving around a modified school bus called the Scarlet Succubus. Now that sounds like my kind of woman. Number one, William Freddy Mikola. The first six words of this obituary are the man, the myth, the legend. And that basically sets the tone for what you can expect in the rest of it. There is a rundown of the women in his life, including Mama Marjorie, Crazy Pam, Big Titty Wanda, Spacey Stacy, and Sweet Melissa. It also claims that he died by rushing into a burning orphanage to save children. Or, well, maybe not. All right, everybody, so which of these would you want to be remembered by? Let us know which one is your favorite in the comments below, and we will pin our favorite to the top. Oh, that's right. This video was made possible by our fans over on Patreon. Thanks for your support, guys. And that's it, everyone. (laughs) See ya. Thank you.